I guess too dirty to just reach in the box and grab another one, right? <laughs> Can't even tell. Alright. Well, you're live. Okay, let's let some people get on here. Oh. Hey, Emma? Yeah. Come here, baby. What? Come here for a minute. Alright. Alright. She said, okay. <laughs> I have to talk her into it. Can you have chocolate all over your face. What did you eat? Oh, the snack pack I gave you. Do me a favor. The cabinets that are behind the TV. Open the middle. Open the middle one, and there's a box with all my Zin. Can you bring me a Zin, please? Get up. Daddy. So I don't have to get No, I don't need that one. Hey, you know what I do need? Can you put those back in the kitchen? If you do need I need my reading glasses that are in my bedroom. Just so I have to do it. Just to get up. Remember, all you tap on it to get your... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, because they go away, don't they? Yeah. I don't know. Why, why do they do that? What's up, Will Shepard? Okay. I'm not, you want to adjust this? Look, see the picture? Oh, yeah, where do you want it? Just center these guys a little bit more. Here, and... I can come over this way. Like huh? Like one piece? Yeah. How about... Who likes my tats? Thanks, dude. You know, we're all dumb in, 20, in our 20s at some point, and a lot of them I really love, and, and, and some of them I don't really care for, but uh, that's the problem with tattoos is <laughs> they're not crayon. You can't wash it off. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome, guys, to uh, episode 16. I am Daniel Judd uh, here at Shark Frenzy with Judd's RC Motorsports. In Ronan Park, California now. Um, as always, I have a close friend and a teammate of mine, Rich Lavac. You can say hi, Rich. What's up? <sighs> yeah. uh, I want to give a huge shout out. I actually don't need these on right now. Well, maybe I do. Let's see. Um, what's up, Daryl Perkins? Uh, he's a local race of ours. Super nice guy. Um, I want to give some huge shout outs. Um, the first one being... Paul Peterson at Shark RC Bodies. Uh, people have been waiting for the Trans Slam. Uh, and, you know, we've had some snags and stuff. The Trans Slam final mold is in hand. It is being boxed tonight or tomorrow. And what that means is when they get the mold, they have to build an air box so it's all airtight to the machine. Um, and uh, they are going into production, I want to say, either tonight or tomorrow. And they start shipping out uh, next week. So... Uh, that's the plan. Um, next, the plan also is to next week, episode 17, to have a trans slam sitting here in front of me. So, um, with that being said, I want to give a huge shout out to Shark RC Bodies. Um, you know, so they're for some people, they're not for some other people. I personally, I wouldn't run anything else other than a shark body. Uh, it's just what I love. It's what Rich loves. It's what Rick loves. It's what Cody loves. It's what this person loves. I mean, we got a lot of people in this right now. We're getting ready. We just actually also just expanded um, the shark team. I'd like to welcome Sky. I can never pronounce his last name, though. Com com Comatix? Comatox? Oops. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I want to welcome Sky to the shark team. Um, I don't want to murder your last name. We all know who Sky is. He's a great guy. Um, uh, he's been brought on, uh, uh, to the Shark RC Bodies race team. Um, he's a factory driver now and, uh, he's just a really cool guy. I've been watching him and I've noticed, you know, we're not looking, when we're looking for a team. We're not looking for somebody who is going out and winning every race or we want to look, we, we look on at a bunch of different things. Wins, they're good, but we're also looking for somebody who got on by shark by themselves and kind of just believed in the product because it was outside the box. Uh, we like people with with um, with good vibes um, and 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 people that 
um, represent themselves well, and we know we'll represent Sharp professionally, and always, um, always. This is a, the biggest part about that to me is is always willing to help a hand to somebody else. So, um, those are some of the things that we're looking for. Um, you know, some online presence, and and just kind of, you know, we I've been doing this long enough that I, I kind of seen just about everything up, down, left, and right, and everything in between, and I and I see what's what. And and uh, Sky was just a guy that was uh, personally to me, Rich. I think it was far overdue. I think that Sky should, you know, I should have brought Sky in probably at the first round when we started the team, and it got filled up so quick because we had been saving names yeah, he, that well, we his, got his name's been out there for a while. It's been floating around for a while. Yeah. So, um, so either way, I want I want to welcome Sky to the uh, to the team tonight. Um, and uh, so, congratulate Sky, you guys. Uh, next time you talk to him or whatever. Uh, big stuff coming, uh, more stuff. You know, the Trans Slam. Everybody's like, "Oh, you know, I've been waiting two or three months for the Trans Slam." Ever since you said something, and you know, well, COVID really put a lot of roadblocks in front of other people, like these new bodies from Drive RC or from Proline or for J Concepts. Those bodies probably would have come out three months ago too, had it not just been, "Well, you know, I'm gonna wait an extra week for plastic," and then you get the plastic, and you're like, "Well, you know, now, now I'm now my my, my design guy's out sick," and it's it's a, <laughs> one thing after right. a freaking another. <laughs> So it is what it is, um, but we have more than just the Trans Slam um, that is ready. Um, I also want to make a big announcement. Rich, what week is it? Shark Week. It's Shark Week, baby. Shark so, uh, hey, Emma, can you bring my host for the weekend? The thing I bought you that's rubber, it's sitting in there and big. So anyway, um... Thank you, Princess. Um, I want to give... Uh, <laughs> it's in the Shark Tank. <laughs> what's up, Chris Bedelia? Uh, Chris, I actually am going to reach out to you probably tomorrow by tomorrow night. Um, I need to talk to Mr. Bedelia um, about something. Um, Brandon Small, um, Alan Thomas, up, TJ Black, Daryl Perkins. Um, get more Darryl. people on here, guys. Um, if you can, try watch parties tonight and stuff. I have, after we do some tech stuff, I have an announcement to make that has to do with Shark RC Bodies, Shark Week, Judd's RC Motorsports, and Desert Hobbies. So this is Mine. my Shark Week. Uh, um, he, he's my new host. Uh, I believe he, uh, he went to, to school at Cambridge. Um, he's, uh, class of 86, uh, anything you want to add? No, he's, he's, he's not a big talker, so. <laughs> this is my, my guy for Shark Week, so I'll put him right here. Goes up in the car. Emma actually found him in the grocery store. She's like, Daddy Shark. I'm like, all right. I grabbed it. <laughs> So, I want to give a huge shout out, guys, to Steve Villanueva of R1. Um, Steve's just uh, on the cutting edge of stuff and uh, been getting so much stuff ready and doing so much hard work that it's, uh, the guys, you know, he just works around the clock and I just, my hat's off to him. The guy's just always thinking uh, of really, really cool um, ideas and he bounces them off me and I might make a tweak and then, you know, next thing you know, we got another cool thing to put in the arsenal. So, um Big stuff coming from R12. Um, again, that's just hit roadblocks as well. Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to Steve Villanueva for always treating me with respect and, and valuing uh, my opinion on stuff, whether it be right or wrong. Um, and, uh, and he's just a really, really good company to be with. So, um, and there's, there's, um, I want to say there's one. See, I like companies that they don't necessarily have to be small. Although I usually like the underdog, okay, but also companies where, like Paul, Paul's an owner and he 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 congregates with his customers and his clients. He wants to be hands on. Uh, Steve is that way. Um, I know. Um, what's his name? Is it Tyler with Tekin? I think so. I think it's Tyler. T Tyler that owns Tekin. Um, I forget the guy's name, uh, but really nice guy, and he, he, he's hands-on, he's on the internet, he's helping people out. I like to see that from companies. Um, so, and, and Steve definitely brings that to the table, and that, that means a, probably the biggest part of, of anything in my book for my love for R1. So, um, with that being said, I also want to give a huge shout-out to Jake Rosen, Tim Terry, Hunter Stewart of Jake's Performance Hobbies. Hmm. 
located in Runner Park, California. For all your drag racing and RC needs, they ship out to the lower 48. You can reach them at 707-586-3375. Uh, that's the first time we just put me on the spot. <laughs> first time I've you had see that, hey, that can pop out of there at yeah, any yeah. time. So you got to be ready for it. Got so sleeping on the light. You were sleeping on the light, dude. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, so um, I want to give a huge shout out to Roy Offenbacher with uh, with uh, Papa Bear 3D. Um, he actually wanted to. He reached out to me. Uh, uh, God, probably a week ago, and he said, man, I just want to make sure your address is right. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, what are you sending me? And he's like, don't, don't worry about it, it's a surprise. <laughs> so I had this package showed up, I opened it, it was anthrax, everybody in my family died. No, I'm just <laughs> playing. Uh, he actually went out of his way. He saw on another show that I had one of his Love parts it. trays that I use a lot. Um, I know when I'm taking something apart, I like to lay stuff out in chronological order. It's just how I do, you know, when, I, when I'm, I'm pulling a, a motor on a Ferrari or we're doing a suspension kit on a Mustang or we're working on one of these these little RC cars here, I like my stuff a certain way. And if it gets pulled apart and put there in chronological order to go right back together in that order, um, I also know that once it's apart, if it has to uh, if it has to stall and stay apart, that whole project gets put picked up and put aside. That's how we do it in the real race car world. It's what Rick does in his shop it's how granddaddy did it and damn it i'm gonna do it too so anyway um this uh these little trays actually work really good and they're 3d printed and he saw that i had a red one roy offenbacker of pop bear 3d saw that i had the red one uh, and he's like well no, i can't have you doing that so he actually reached out actually didn't reach out just told him just made it and sent it but he made one that says Judd's RC Motorsports. This guy, he can put anything you want in here, any logo you want. Uh, and he's got hundreds of products, guys. Uh, whether you are also in your spare time a, um, a crawler guy and you want you know, little miniature wrenches for your little miniature toolbox that sits right next to your miniature welder that's right next to your miniature air compressor that's, you know, he makes all that stuff. So... He makes some drag race products uh, that are that are, are on the market. A lot of you have seen them. The uh, the camber plates, the the plate setup, the setup, the setup table. Uh, I call it on the, the on the go setup table because it's it's it tells you it doesn't tell you a bunch of things that a full setup table would tell you, but the setup plates to check three or four really quick things to make sure they didn't get bumped or knocked at a race really quickly, that's what they're there for. So what gives you solid points to measure off? They're right there, the pink ones. Um, if you don't have a set of these and you don't want to bring a big old setup table uh, to a race, I, I highly recommend these. These are a great product. Um, they just bolt right on the hubs and they're just, they're really good. So um, as you can see, it's the same stuff, 3D, uh, or Papa Bear 3D. Um, and he just, he all on his own put his logo up. So I wanted to say thanks to Roy. That was really, really nice of him um, for putting my logo in one of these trays. And now not only do I have two trays, but one of them is badass and it has my, my logo in it. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to give him a big shout out. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Dave Enstrom of uh, DE Racing Tires. Um, everything almost in my stable has DE Racing Tires on it. It's a great company. Um, and, uh, and I just... He's always been really nice and informative. He's, I think he's one of those guys where he, he, he has so many reins on his own company that he's work, 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 you know? So, you know, I, I, I don't talk to him. I don't bug him until, you know, just like when I'm at work, you know, I tell uh, my other mechanics and I say, hey, I have to say this, so I'll do respect, but I got to do this right now and it's really important. So unless this, this, and this happen, you can't bug me right now. You got to figure it out. Okay, but if this happens, come get me, you know, and that's kind of how I, 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 I'm treating Dave. Dave's, uh, he's a busy guy. We all are. We're all busy guys, especially at the end of, co you know, the Wu flu, yeah, the, Wu flu. the election infection. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we're all, we're all hustling and getting back to work and getting our gears up to, to full, you know, RPMs and, um, and Dave works around the clock, but Dave's, uh, he's, he's been a great guy and I'm proud to represent DE Racing Tires. Um, I only had so much wall behind me. The DE banner, if you want to swing the camera around, is uh, is up there. So I want to make sure that he gets some banner time on the show. Okay. So 
let's see what else we got here. Um, so why don't you get that asphyxiated and centered on me again, and then I, I need you to go get something for me. I need to send you after something. <laughs> um, tonight's show, remember, big announcement at the end of this, so please uh, reach out. It has to do with Desert Hobbies, Shark Week, Shark RC Bodies, and Judd's RC Motorsports. Um, and uh, we'll get to that, but I want people to watch the video. Or uh, you know, that's just you know, if you got a raffle, you don't do a show and a raffle and have the raffle first. You always have it in black, you know at the end. So uh, we're gonna tell you what that stuff is soon. Tonight is a show that I want to kind of keep it short and brisk, but I want to cover a few just quick topics. Um, I'm noticing more newbies uh, getting into the game. Um, as you know, I want to say there's like a I always call it the 10-6 the, the ratio, and the, and the reason why I say that is because for every 10 people I see get into it, I see six people getting out of it. Um, maybe it's they don't want to put that kind of work into a toy car. Uh, maybe it's that, um, you know, like I, I, I've always said in all my videos, uh, probably 200 hours at this point of videos, that I'm very, very grateful, and I thank God all the time for, for the, the things that he's given me, and, and that I can, I can earn the money I do to do the sport to the level I do it at. Um, and, and maybe some people just aren't in it for that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't want to do that. And that's okay, too. This, this sport, before you go out and win races and be almighty, oh, whatever, I mean, the first thing you got to do is have fun. If we're not having fun anymore, I don't want to play, you know? <laughs> so, um, I want to do a show tonight that just shows some of these newer guys getting into it, just some basic stuff. And I think that throughout the week, hint, hint, uh, we're going to be doing some more of that, you know, and we can, and that's what the board's up there for Rich now. I just, every time I get an idea, I just, you know, camera doesn't need to see it, but it's just, it's a board that, that when I get an idea, I put it up there and then throughout the week, I look at it on the board and I think, okay, this is how I'm going to do this on the show. So, um, let's dive into this because I really want to get to the announcement. Um, I want to give a huge shout out right now to Billy Shaw. Of desert hobbies um, anybody who's in this or just even been into it a week is gonna know you know what Billy's doing down in, in, in Arizona um, I want to give a huge shout out to Mark Vine um, and then like I said I, I always say this you know I could keep going down the list of all the people want to give shouts out but I can't I can't spend all night getting um, yeah saying hi to everybody uh, but Billy actually did a couple things for me this week um, Billy sent me Two brand new sets of headphones for me and Rich, and two microphones for me and Rich. So this week I'm going to get on the uh, old interweb, and I'm going to check out some mixing boards and get my laptop in here, and we're going to go to the next level with this stuff. So um, thank you so much, Billy. Billy also he was able. Uh, I was working a double that weekend. It just didn't work out for me. You know, I'll work. Uh, how can I say this? I wear a lot of hats for the city I work for, for the city entity that employs me. And those hats, because I wear them and they've entrusted me to wear them, I'm the only one that they fit. So sometimes I really can't get away. And I wasn't able to make it to Oklahoma. And, you know, uh, I heard that uh, the big chief came out and I called Billy and I said, hey, Billy, man, if, you know, if you could bring me anything back. Can you bring me back a, an autograph from, from Big Chief? So if you want to pan the camera over here, Billy actually, with all the equipment he sent me, he sent me, he walked over to the guy and had the guy sign this shirt to send it to me. Um, and, and Justin Shear, if you're, if you're out there and you see this, I'm a big fan. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to go up there and... and and, and, you know, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not that guy, but, you know, I am a fan and, uh, you know, I think the dude's legit. I always have since the first season. I respect what he does. Uh, and I, uh, I just really, really means a lot to me. See, something, something like that, I mean, that's a, that's a one billionth of a penny worth of ink on a t shirt. You know what I'm saying? And that means more to me. If somebody said, hey, man, I'm going to light something on fire. I'm going to light that car down there on fire or that shirt on fire. I'd say, dude, please take the car and the one sitting next to it, you know, <laughs> because that shirt just means a lot. That guy, and it's not even the shirt or even Big Chief's signature. It's the fact that Billy walked over there and did that for me. That's respect right there. So thank you, Billy. Uh, let's get into the show. Kind of, kind of the signature. <laughs> it, it, well, yeah, the signature is badass. Yeah, if I could, you know, I, I, everybody knows me. I'm a Ford guy. There's one GM car I like. I like the Crow. The Crow's, you know. It's, uh, I mean, I, I personally would, would engine swap it with an NMR motor, but whatever. whatever. 
Um, it, it's uh, it's just tough, dude. It's just the motherfucker's tough. And I don't want to swear on my show, but the motherfucker's tough. <laughs> that might get two pinches. Exactly. Okay. So, um, in the green tub is my little, remember that little skill? The little doo 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 that I use with my wheels? Yeah. Can you grab that out of there? In there? I'm pretty sure it's in there. Yeah, how are you going to do that, buddy? So let's see what else we got going on here while you're getting out. Uh, what's up, Roger? Um, Casey? Anthony Steele? There's Sky. What's up, Sky? Rick Turner's on. What's up, Rick? So, hey, just to let everybody know, if you haven't been on the page today and you didn't see what we did, I wish Tim was there, but Tim was working and we couldn't do it tomorrow because half these guys got list races. But me and Rich and uh, Rick Turner and uh, a new friend that I made, one of Rick's friends down from where does he live? Down down by Delta RC Raceway. Who? He Rick? had a Delta. Rick Turner. No, John. Way. Oh, John. Uh, I'm not sure. Probably the same area. I mean, he had the Delta shirt on and stuff. But John, can notice, actually, I feel like I made a new friend today. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a nice guy, um, really, really respectful, and uh, the dude freaking sent it, dude. So we brought <laughs> we brought uh, four of our paddle cars out, and we're talking full body drag cars with just paddle tires on it, and sending it. And we had a blast running it up and down the damn beach. And uh, my daughter was the first one. If you go and find the video, one of the videos we posted on Judd's RC Motorsports. Um, they were, they turned around the cone and they were all, it was a race down and back and they were on their way back and Emma just forgot to stop and just went bloop right into the, right into the canal. So, uh, Rick Turner, I love you. Any man, you're all watching this because you love RC, it's in your blood. So listen to me, listen to me one time, okay? If another RC man or woman jumps into a body of water to get your RC car without being asked to, you take your goddamn hat off to that guy, okay? <laughs> Rick Turner, yeah, that meant a lot, dude. He didn't even think, and he was, so I was 15 feet away from it, he was 6 or 7, and he just went, shit, I'm in there! <laughs> and he just jumped in the goddamn water! He did so, it, and then, hold on, I gotta get it! <laughs> I really got that. No, but then, no, that was actually closer to you than it was to me. Did you see that? That was my What are you looking for? What am I looking for again? Uh, remember my little red-handled skill tool? Yeah, it's not in there. Well, it's only in one of the three... Oh, unless it's in one of the um, the drawers, it could be. Okay, so um, one thing's kind of a two-part thing, and I need to show it to you guys. With that, I don't see it. It's not up there. Are you sure it's not in there? Yeah. Okay. So bring that over. Um, again, this is a, a tech video that, uh, again, I want to get more into these because I got into this to help the little guy. You know, a lot of, there's so many big dudes tonight, right now, and there's so many fast guys, and they all kind of run their own race program, and I'm not really, you know, maybe we'll, every now and then we'll do a video on like a new product or something and what I do with it, and maybe that, you know, somebody else that's a heavy hitter can, can look at what they do with it, and maybe that might help them some way, I don't know. But these videos, right from the start a year and a half ago when I founded 707 Streetcars and I went from Judd's RC Motorsports and changed the name to include two other guys to, to 707 Streetcars. I said on our first video, if we can help one guy and still to this day I go to races in other towns I've never been to and I have people come up and go, dude, you're Dan Judd, Judd dude, it's Dan Judd, dude, you guys helped us a lot, bro. Your videos that you made and that that's what I do it for. I do it for the little guy because the more people we get into it, we want to we want to welcome them with open arms. We want to know that they can come to stay. Um, we want them to have the number one word. What's the number one word, Rich? Fun. Fun. You gotta have fun doing this sport. So um, you know when you get into it, you're like, dude, this guy tells me about this one, but this guy says this guy's high, and then I bought this battery, and this other dude over here said it's the wrong one. Our next thing, you know, that was only you saw how how frustrating that got in just what eight seconds of me doing that in oh, yeah. two different. Now you look at a car that's built of so many different manufacturers' parts, mm -hmm. and you can see why people bail. You know, people are like, oh, I'm not I'm dealing with this shit, you know? <laughs> so, and that's just racing, uh, you know, and so I'd like to cut some of that out of it and get back to my roots and, and really get into some tech stuff. So, if you could be so kind as sure. to hand me my bullet car, the Corleone, and uh, 
Yeah, we're gonna need a car stand. Get in there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You're awesome. Rich is a Rich is a badass. Okay, so this is my Mark Vine bullet. Um, it's Corleone, and it actually has some. Uh, what are these? It has reactions on it right now. Um, I run a DEs and DEs. I got I got six cars right now, and they all run everything DE. Okay. Um, but this car, I've, I've been getting into it, just kind of doing some testing with the belting stuff, just kind of logging my own data. Uh, I ran it last weekend. Uh, Tim called, Tim Terry at, at Jake's Performance Hobbies kind of called me out. He's like, you're kind of sandbagging with that car, dude. I could tell you weren't leaving and stuff. He's like, I know how you are on the light. And I was like, well, I needed to get some data. So <laughs> hmm. I didn't say yes. I didn't say no. But anyway, this is my Mark Vaughn car. Uh, this is the Daniel Judd Mark Vine car. This is my, my TLR 5.0 R1, complete R1 powered. Um, and what I mean by that is battery, speed control, cat pack, motor, everything other than the receiver is R1 in this thing. Um, and I've put some coin into this thing. I've put a lot of hard work into it. So I don't mind showing the new guys because a, a lot of the new guys get in. What's one of the first questions they ask? Dude, what's the most badass car? That's what, even, even if they're not going to stay. They always ask, what's the most badass car? And right now, a lot of it goes back to the bullet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think there's other things that are being worked on that are just as good, maybe if not better. Uh, but this is a top-notch, top shelf, right next to Dom Perignon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I love my bullet car. It's a great car. Uh, again, as always, Mark and, and Bob Vine, my hat's off to you. Um, but I want to show you a couple things on this car. So even people that aren't prepping and they're running no prep... Um, what was happening was, is I was making a mess of myself. I was using all kinds of chemicals, and I used to still even bring rubber gloves. If you guys can afford rubber gloves, I, I, I highly recommend it, even to clean them. Um, you know, there's a couple things that are going to go into this right now. Um, and one of them is when I was using, everybody knows like the little daubers that, uh, just hand me the, the money. The right there, you have the money. So, um, everybody is well... Oh, it's all glued. Oh, it's sticky. I should have done this last. The daubers, okay? Well, anybody who's anybody who's ever used a dauber, now I'm talking beetle, beetle juice conditioner, uh, you know, grip stuff, uh, reaction time, anything like that. If you do it with your hand, okay, not only are you wasting a lot, it's dripping down and you have a, 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 um, a chance of it spraying up into the body and the body sometimes don't like some of the chemicals, but you're also wasting a lot of product. And let's face it, this crap ain't cheap. So um, I wanted an easier way that kept shit off my hands that allowed me to apply this stuff to my tires at a perfect even rate and something that made less a mess and wasted less stuff. And I saw one guy, I, I can't take this, uh, this credit, even though I've thought about it before, but I didn't know about the little handheld ones that until I saw this guy using it. Uh, we were uh, one of the gentlemen. He was actually running pretty fast that day, and uh, I, I was watching him from my pit. I was like, "Oh shit! Yeah, I could get one of those. They're probably only thirty, forty bucks." No, this right here is a USB. I can hook it to my eye, to my eye charger, to my high tech charger, to my car, to my truck, um, and it just plugs right in. And if you hold it one way, it goes one way. And if you hold it the other way, it goes the other way. And now, how I apply my stuff. It's just like that. So I take, say my fingers, my dauber. Or I can go the other way. Okay. Then that tire is done. I bring it back. I put it on this side. Actually, you know, it races. I don't. I'm leaning over. I'm trying to get it done quick. But, uh, and the reason why I have tape on mine, it is a... All that stuff's on. I don't want to take the it off. tip that he has in it's there doesn't have the lock. It's an eight millimeter hex that has a quick release, and this this uh, this hexed um, driver right here doesn't have the channel grooved in it to stay in the quick release, so it slips out. So I got tired of it. I didn't buy one yet. I was lazy, and so I just taped it. It's the only thing I use it for. It charges in about twenty minutes. They are fifteen dollars, dude. Fifteen bucks in. I guarantee you, 70% of the mess on your hands. Uh, we were going home, what, black hands sticking to everything. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I had papers and body clips, and I was just, it was bad. So um, that's just, sometimes it works the diff, sometimes it runs the motor. Right now it's running the motor, um, and, and, it, and it works really good. Now, a lot of, um, make that stationary. Grab me one, uh, one rag up there. 
Okay. Now, whether you're racing, whether you, the, the, the blue rags, I'm sorry, the blue rags. Oh, yeah. Um, whether you're racing prep or no prep, I was looking for sand because I was, this, this prep stuff is pretty, pretty expensive and the cleaners and stuff are expensive too. So I'm like, okay, I've been an automotive technician for, and a, and a journeyman fabricator for going on 27 years here. There's got to be a cheaper you know, way to this. So I'm still spending the money. I personally, at this point in time, I have some stuff I'm testing, but at this point in time, me and Rich right now, we use reaction time. It works good. Um, this is another one that's coming out. Uh, it's, uh, it's money grip. Um, I, I got some testing to do with that before I, before I, I, I pushed on the show. But um, what I'm talking about is the cleaning side of it. Now, not only do you, if you get a little sticky on your hands, will this stuff take it right off, but it is cheap, it is fast, it is easy. Um, and I'll show you what it is. So if you're Joe Schmo and you walk into an auto zone, you're gonna pay, what is it up to now? Like $6.99 a can? Something like that, yeah. Okay. So I go to my Napa Auto Parts, and my Napa Auto Parts, it was $30 for a case of it. So what I'm talking about, Oh, come on, fatty, pick it up. Bam. Your run-of-the-mill CRC brake clean. That's all I'm using to clean my tires, okay? If you're running no prep, you can do what I'm about to do here using this stuff because all it's gonna do, it just really cleans the tires and leaves it dry. It doesn't leave anything on the, on the, on the tire. It won't leave anything on the ground. It is totally legal. Uh, it doesn't... Uh, amplify or modif modify the molecular structure of the rubber in any way. Um, if anything, it makes it colder. Um, so sometimes I like to uh, clean my tires off really good with this and then put them on the tire warmers and get them up to 70 or 80 degrees uh, and then add my goop. So, uh, and I'll do that every single round. I run this car, it's running full tilt. It has one run on that tire prep. So I will clean my tires probably once or at least once or twice before you know when the day starts I'll heat them up uh, on my on my tire warmers till they're 70 or 80 and I'll, I'll bake them like that for 10 or 15 minutes then I take them off I apply I let it sit for three or four minutes and get tacky and then I go run as soon as I'm done with that one hit, that's it I pick that car up and I go back and I start the process over grab my brake clean clean the tires I use my skill thing to turn the wheel then after that sits and dries, if the tires are still warm, if you're racing on a warm day, you might not need to, you know, it might be over, you know, a little bit over tractioning the car. Of what I've noticed, I've actually done with the, with the tire heaters and the, the sticky. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, the last time I run, I mean, the, it stayed from 60 spot. foot down to one, yeah, to 132, the car was a rocket, but at, you know, the first 50, 40 or 50 feet, at least it was like, it was Velcro to the ground. I was like, okay, I'm putting too much. Well, it didn't stuff even on. roll at first. It's all, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. So let's set this case over here. And what I'm going to do. So when I'm doing this, I take one of your blue towels that I've mentioned that are great. These are automotive towels. Again, you can go to Costco and for like $15.99 buy a case of like, what is it, like 12 rolls or something? Comes in a big stuff. roll. I just have to break my case out. Um, I'll fold it in half. I think it comes in like six. Fold it? it in half again. Uh, I don't want to get near Don't get this stuff near Lexan. Take your body, go put it in the other room. So, I get it pretty wet. Whoop, that wasn't supposed to happen. No, instantly it's dry and that thing is sticky. It's And it's clean sticky. There's no goop on this. This is a dry tire. This one, it's it was cleaned with brake clean at the last race we ran, but it's been rolled around on the table and stuff like that. So let's let's go ahead and clean it. So once you start get once you start getting dirty, flip it over and make it wet again. Now, just because there's a wet spot doesn't mean it's wet enough, enough to work. The stuff's gotta be pretty, again, I'm doing this backwards. Look at all that crap that was on the tire, just from sitting in my shop. Now this tire, feel how sticky that is now. It's almost brought on the outside where I wasn't running. This is a problem I didn't know I was having because it was dark and it's been fixed on this car. But where it's not, 
worn where there's no wear pattern here and it's just a bare brand new surface of a tire, you can feel it actually brought my, my prep back. So um, again, for no prep, it's cheap, it's easy. Um, and you can see how easy that was. I mean, with, with this thing right here, boom, tire's clean. Boom, tire's clean. Now, if we're hectic and Rich isn't running soon, he'll walk up to my car right after that, put the heaters on, or I'll put the heaters on. They sit for five or ten minutes. I rip them son of a bitches on there, and the whole point isn't necessarily to keep the tire hot for when you go run. They're going to cool down because you're going to have to stand there. It might be two minutes, might be ten minutes. Don't rely on that keeping your tire hot. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use that heat after they're clean to open the pores of the rubber. Then after they're hot and I take the tire warmers off, those pores are open and I do my goop and it gets into the tire. So um, I don't know what magnification that would be. That's a pretty big pore. Uh, like, <laughs> is that uh, one pore or is yeah. that a bunch of little pores? Hi. What can you have to eat? Want some pork rinds? Yeah. What do you want? Well, you got, you can, baby, you got to wait. You got to find something to eat. So, um, kid eats all day. I don't feel bad for her. So, whoop. so this is a good thing, you guys. I know Mark Vine, I think, uses brake clean. There's a lot of guys using brake clean. It's a really easy, cheap thing to do or to use. Um, readily available. Readily available. Literally at your local Walmart. <laughs> um, Um, Scott Eckhart says, tore my motor apart, put it back together tonight based off of the show we did a couple weeks ago, and it still works after cleaning. Thanks for the awesome advice. Cool. Glad I could help you, Scott. Um, yeah, Rick's just awesome, dude. Um, anyway, so, um, Emma, I need a Gigi, please. All right. And, uh, other than that, this car is done. Um, actually, we can get into the other tech, uh, other tech advice. You know, and it's not so much tech advice. It's almost half of working on any kind of race car is knowing your tooling. And a lot of these guys don't come from master mechanic backgrounds like me and Rich. So it's some of these things that we do on a normal basis seem like huge tasks to them because they don't know what the tooling is available for it. As you can see, that right there. You know, somebody going, man, I bought the right stuff and it's working, but man, it's just every, well, there you go, man. You know, um, you know, tire cleaner, if you want to use some of the, you know, the, 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 the crystal clear stuff and, and some of the conditioners out there, that's fine. It stuff works great, especially Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is great stuff, especially for no prep. Um, or what Beetlejuice works really good for is to, after they're clean, hit them with Beetlejuice, let the Beetlejuice dry and then put the tire warmers on. Because it'll open those pores even more. Right. Thank you. Um, so, uh, but but you know, as far as is being cheap uh, and rel readily available, and and between between the skill tool and the brake clean, it's cheap, it's easy, it's fast, it's clean. Because that's the thing that was killing me. Man. Well, the thing is, you can be on the way on your way to a race and go, oh, oh. shoot, I got to get some cleaner. I forgot cleaner. Stop there it is. Park store yeah, anything you can ever Walmart substitute or... in your race uh, racing schedule that works just as good, that's readily available. Um, we've been talking about that lately with the Voodoo's. The Voodoo's are great tires. Um, from what I, you know, from what I've seen personally now, uh. I know exactly what Mark Vine means when he says they are an unfair advantage. Um, and uh, but again, if you can't get them, you can't get them. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm building my race program, depending on where I'm racing and how I'm racing. Um, and depending on what race program is being put on, uh, whether it's no prep or prep or, you know, low traction or high traction, uh, I'm using, you know, primarily, uh, DE stuff and, and, and the reactions, um, and the react, even the reactions, it's the only thing I own in anything that's pro line. It's, it's only on one car. Uh, and it's just what I run the car. Um, it, 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 they work good. So, um, and, but the, you know, for, like for my rear motor car, I'm sorry, dude. I just, it's the, it's the DEs all the way. Dude, I got my DEs tearing it up. Dude, the DEs, your car was <laughs> ripping, bro. Um, yeah, my, I, I primarily, I run these cars here too. Anybody who's raced me thus far in San Leandro, those had DEs on it. Next time it'll be 15 miles an hour faster. Um, but 
with my rear motor car, it wants the DEs. That's what I run. And I run my rear motor car a lot. You know what I'm saying? So do you. That's what I'm um, soon to be soon to be my rear motor low seat that's coming, you know, um, and 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 th that'll have DEs on it because they just freaking work for rear motor chassis. They work really, really good. So um, what are you going there, man? No, I'm not good. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> you came up with like just full assurance that you were going to just make some badass. You just stop talking about it. And, uh, OK, the moment. Was so. Over. I had probably the first one because I used really nice wrenches. You know, I, I I was, where was I? I was with somebody and they had some wrenches. I think it was you. You had like just like a. Oh, yeah. Not Daddy. your regular wrenches, but they were like, uh, we were out testing somewhere. It was last minute. You had a little bag that had some wrenches and I didn't even bring any. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you brought them. And I ended up using one. And that, what was a couple, that was a couple weeks ago. And what happened 30 feet out? Right oh, dude, the pinion wrench. came right off. The pinion came off because it didn't get mm -hmm. tight enough. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where good good billet wrenches come in. Whether you get something fancy like this or you get the MIP wrenches, you guys got to get some good wrenches. Um, these wrenches are, are, are CNC cut. Um, they're, these ones are Aeromax. I actually got these from... Oh, hey, I got these from Matt Kidd. And Matt Kidd, let's all congratulate Matt Kidd. Matt Kidd's uh, getting ready to have a second child. So Whoa. that's pretty right. good. Uh, yeah. Matt, Matt and Ashley, uh, Kidd, uh, absolutely just awesome news, phenomenal. So... Um, I got these from Matt. I bought these off Matt a couple years back, and they've just ever since they've been great wrenches. If you take care of them, you don't over torque stuff with them, you don't break them, uh, and if you do, they sell replacement. This this shaft comes out, and you can put a new shaft in. Um, but, they don't twist. Um, they don't have that torque twist. There's also a it's a it's a double bad edge sword and what i mean is is like like that pinion putting something in it didn't get tight enough it didn't get that last little snub to it um and and the pinion blew right off so um for the first time in years i was working on what was i working on i was working on one of my cars and uh, about during the week this last week sometime and i actually stripped a screw trying to take it out and the, and the screw was rounded and I put a better, I put one of my good wrenches in it, and, it, and it, I felt it was a little better, but it just rounded it too. So what I want to talk to you guys is this does not have to be doing what I'm about to show you. doesn't have to be a, a, oh my God, what the F am I going to do kind of scenario. It's just a, okay, I got to go, I got to go cut a slot. You know what I'm saying? So let's say I was going to take out one of these chassis screws. Okay. And I put my wrench in. You guys remember there is metric and standard. Yeah, there, there are. There's two. There's two different. You got so imperial. if you get one that doesn't feel like it fits quite right and it is that small, try a you know either a standard okay. on it or if you're that one will strip because they're so tight. Um, so as you can see, I'm taking and I'm turning that screw. Okay, but sometimes these little black screws um, will round out now. Once you know you're using the right wrench, and even if it's a really good wrench, if your wrench does not go all the way into the hexed cavity and it's only half wind because there's dirt at the bottom, then you're going to strip it with a good wrench. So what I like to do is if anything that's got any dirty in it or any dirt in it at all, I'll take a, a, um, a push pin like one of these. I've taken a broken driver. One of these push and pins. put a point on it. Or that, anything that's really sharp, a needle, um, anything like that. Describe. And what you can do is just kind of circle around the bottom of the hole of the hex and get all that dirt out of there and blow it out. And now it's a clean cavity and you'll, you'll know that, that your wrench isn't going in just halfway. It went all the way down. You need that surface area of that, of that 330 seconds or whatever is into that screw. If you have dirt in there, if you have dirt packed in there and it only goes in a 30 second, it's going to strip right out. So I stripped a screw and you want to put this back over there real quick. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use that again. Um, and what is this, Rich? I don't know, Dan. Tell me what that is. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good answer. This is a Dremel. Um, this was like a $100 Craftsman one when Sears was still open. That's how long I've had it. Um, they, I think that don't, I don't recommend anybody getting the little tiny Dremel that has the battery on the end. They're just not powerful enough. Get you a 110 Dremel. This is one of the yep. tricks of the trades. I use this for, if there's any power tool like this 
or some of my other stuff that I use, I use this one thing for more of this hobby than anything else. That bit right there, that cone bit, is exactly how I put my holes in my bodies. And I, I you know, if there's any flat marks from cutting the wheel wells out, I'll just kind of yeah, 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 and, and make them nice and, you know, I can deburr stuff with it. But then you can go up to a Harbor Freight and you can turn this thing into a real tool. You can buy one of these for about 15 bucks. And as you can see, there's all kinds of cutoff wheels, grinding wheels. Uh, you got, uh, you got milling bits. You got, uh, wire brushes, plastic brushes, copper brushes, steel brushes. I got buff pads. I got everything in here. So when it comes to the strip screw, I'm going to take out what we call a cutoff wheel arbor. Okay. So what is holding the cutoff wheel is called the arbor. And this is basically going to be just a, a gritty disc that has a hole in it. And it's, as you can see, it's mm -hmm. very, very thin. Okay. And the way I'm going to get this out is I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to put it in. Um, now, if this was a big one in the automotive or fabrication industry, we call it a death wheel. We call it a death wheel for a reason. So do not get this. Do not attempt this. Do not buy one of these unless you are going to wear safety glasses. I don't want to be responsible. Oh, I saw Dan Judd did it in his video and the damn disc blew off. These discs, when they go off, hmm. it might bounce off your skin and just go, ow, what the hell was that? That thing hits you in the eye because it breaks apart you're going to have permanent sight uh, problems. So always wear your safety glasses. Now, once you have your safety glasses in and you have your cutoff arbor and your cutoff wheel in the Dremel tool and you're plugged into the wall, obviously, I'm going to turn this thing on, okay? And the best thing to do when you're trying to do this is always, remember, always cut less and try and cut less and try. If you cut just grind it to the bore. What you're going to do is you're going to put a groove, a cut mark, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a cut mark in it. You're going to put a cut mark in the head of the, the screw and on each side of the chassis. And that makes the chassis look really shitty. And it can create a breaking point. So what I'm going to do is I'm always going to have my hand on something firm. Okay. Like whether I put the back of my hand here and I let my hands guide this. I don't ever just want to do this. You see how my hands out here floating? I don't ever want to do this, okay? That's not good. You want to make sure your hand isn't going to move if it catches, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit right in the center, right in the center where the hole is, and I'm going to strip screw before. This one actually didn't turn out very well, but it still came out. That's what we're doing to it. Okay, so once you have a strip screw and it's rounded out, your only option is to groove it and now take it out with a flathead screwdriver. Okay, so that's a really, really good trick. You know, I, I've seen people cut X's into chassis. I've, you know, seen people try and grind the whole head off. That That's not the appropriate way to go after that. Um, it sucks. And even if you get a little nick in the chassis, who gives a shit? You got the damn screw out. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, especially if the thing is they don't, with a bigger bolt or screw, like on a real race car, you have what happens sometimes called gulling, which you'll crack it loose and the bolts coming out and a quarter of the way out or a half the way out. So your head's sticking way out now. Um, the bolt will start to lock up. And what happens is the threads have a misalignment on the inside from being stretched and they'll go and they'll ruin whatever it's threaded into and the threads on the screw and it just ruins everything. That's when you got to stop and retap everything. But with a little screw on an RC car, it will always strip when you first try and torque it. Okay. When you first try and, and, and open it, it will get easier and easier and easier and easier as it comes out. And unlike a real automotive screw where or bolt where galling happens, um, you're never going to get one of these little screws halfway out and then it start galling and take all the threads out for no reason, which really sucks. Uh, in a 27 year career, I've had maybe it's either stripped or it's not. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, safety glasses always have your your hand firm. Cut your groove in the screw. Okay. And then take a flat head that fills that groove as wide as possible, and it will crack loose. You will get that thing out with a flat head, I guarantee you. So, 
Um, this is just, again, tricks of the trade. These are tools that are available to make your life easier in this hobby. Um, and this is, this is a must have, whether I'm building doll houses or I'm doing RC boats or helicopters, every, anybody who's ever done any kind of RC, anything has a freaking Dremel at home. You've got to get a Dremel. Um, and it doesn't have to be a Dremel. It can be a cheaper knockoff model. As long as you've got something to use, I just don't recommend the battery ones. The battery ones go, and that's just it. That's Regular, a real Dremel will last you forever. This, this is a 75th anniversary craftsman one. Okay, I probably bought that 12 years ago, yeah. and it still rips like it's brand new. So, but it's quality. I mean, um, it's, you can tell it's quality built. Yeah, you know, the motor that's in it isn't raw legal, but. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, and these are good kits to have. If you go and you spend 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 bucks, depending on the model and brand that you get of a of a, of a good rotary tool, um, go and buy yourself the stuff to use it. This right here. It's just like a driver in a car. The driver can't do nothing without the car, but the car can't do nothing without a driver. It's the same thing with the, this toolkit right here. This is useless without tooling. So this is your tooling. This is the kind of kit you want to get. Um, again, this bit I use for everything, so we'll just put it back in there. Um, yeah, and that's all there is to that. So. Now, if you want to put this up there where those Desert Hobby stickers are. And then set the car up there. Let's see what I got on the old interweb here. Stop calling with that. Okay, so you know what? Matt Kidd actually is chiming in. Matt, I don't know if you're still um, watching, but I wanted to say, dude, from the bottom of my heart, I know I've been moving. I haven't seen you guys in a month and a half, but... Man, it's just such good news. You can have another baby, man. That's just awesome. So uh, tell Ashley, your wife, that I said my, you know, my, my, uh, my, send my love and my best wishes. Um, and Matt states there is a battery powered version um, made by Milwaukee that's actually pretty decent now. Okay, which is awesome because the actual brand Dremel I have one at my shop. I actually threw it away and went and bought one of these when I started there for oh, really? Yeah, I'm like this thing's junk, Mike. I told my supervisor, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? You know. <laughs> Um, awesome, Matt's watching. Matt's a, he's kind of stepped away from the last year from RC and he got his, um, his little boy, uh, into, um, the little tiny mini sprint cars. He does the little the teeny. Yeah, it's a uh, box stock, I think he's racing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're in it. They're all about it, dude. Yeah. You know? So you know, if I didn't have freaking 30 or 40 grand into this crap, maybe I could do that too. You know? <laughs> Uh, but I'm really, really happy for Matt and Ashley. That's just the best news in the world. Anytime a close friend of mine, you know, it, it, you know I find out they're having a child, you bring in more of that good person into the yeah, world. That yeah. just means a lot to me, dude. So um, let's get on to the last topic of the night. Um, you know, would it be easier for you to monitor this, to have both phones? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, hey, I don't know. Let's try. Sometimes if you look let's at try. it, it's not working. Um, oh, hey, Emma, baby. Yeah. You brought me a warm ginger ale. What the heck, man? I thought you loved me. Huh? Yeah, the diet white ones. Just bring me a diet one. So this actually is my, again, all R1 power DE shark body rear motor car. Um, and she bad. Um, and this car and his red car were tuned together and they're very, very close. And anybody that Rich ate, and I gotta say, I love my Lake County guys. I know Rick's first on the list, but next time, next time Rich uh, goes up to Lake County and he, he brings that car, plan on letting him drive away with the crown on. So. <laughs> yeah, that car's moving. It got, works I very, very well. Right. And it's all turned down, too. Well, I remember two or three years ago when I first uh, met the, the Lake County guys, um, compared to where they are right now when I went up there two or three months ago, night and day, dude. They, a lot of those guys got it figured out now, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I think that their biggest, the Lake County's uh, biggest downfall, Frank and Brandon and all them, um, is their surfaces. Everything's slurry sealed up there, and I'm talking slick yeah. slurry sealed. So. You can get some good passes on their regular track, though. Um, and that's the fun of it. You got to tune it. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you can't go as fast as you possibly can. Yeah, but they're, they're off. They came a long way. They're all fast. Um, Not, 
No, they are. Uh, but and I have to say, every time I go up there, you know, you walk up, you're a pro driver, you put your car down, and you're like, oh yeah, it's slurry sealed, and it lets you know that that's the equalizer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It totally yeah. is. But you know what? One thing I do have. Yeah, but when's the last time you raced on their original spot? I don't oh, think God. that's slurry seal the at, the boat, at, the ramp, at the boat. At the boat at the boat ramps. Yeah, that, I don't think that's slurry seal. I would, let me put it this way: I was when I went up there the last time and ran on that by the boat dock. I was running the ghost. So over over a year ago, yeah. you know. No, they got a pretty decent surface. So anyway, this is the Patriot. Uh, this car is about ready to undergo a major modification. Uh, it's going to be having the RCRI chassis taken out of it and the JPH chassis uh, put under it. Um, local hobby shop, I think I, I know for a fact I can get to do the JPH chassis do the same thing as this while uh, pr uh, promoting and, and supporting my local hobby shop. But I think I can get the JPH chassis. I think it's a better chassis. So um, we're going to take a part of this car apart and show you guys about bump steer. So, real easy way, uh, I'll just do it over here. So as you can see, she is a DE racing wheel, low slung, low hung rocket. She's got 12 and a half inch bars on her, she's got the big wheels. Uh, this was another car that I actually uh, went back to 32 pitch on, um, just because it, it, it Steve Villanueva was making some some really good motors. So, uh, and and you know, I've had people that have only been into this for like a year, probably about two or three months ago, when I was having a big problem with it. I spent hundreds of dollars on ten different manufacturers: Spur Gear, Shell, and Losi, and Associated, and this person, and that person, and Robinson, and 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 all the different kind of opinions, and different widths, and different sizes, and different gear ratios, and a no mesh, a tight mesh, a loose mesh. And I had new guys when I would be asking about new products out there um, chiming in and going, dude, you're doing something wrong. I'm like, no, dude, the motors are doing real wrong. I mean, they're just nasty motors. Um, and I put, you know, once the car rolls out, uh, I put a lot of power in these cars. And plastic spur gears is the weak link. It's like the fuse, you know. Um, so I have fix that temporarily until something wink wink comes out <laughs> um and uh and and that my temporary fix was to do 30 pitch, two pitch now yes i've lost the adjustability of the gear ratio uh but it is just is what it is so um i don't know that's going to be really hard to see so right behind you if you flop the top of that down to my wrenches my race box yeah in the far end in the bin the uh, right side, there's going to be a bright silver aluminum billet wrench. It's an old associated wrench. Yep, yeah, that's it. So, one of the last things that aren't metric on these. And we'll say I'm about 316th lower. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off so you guys can get... A better view of what's going on here a lot of people just go dude I've never seen you in a wreck why do all your cars have foam out there it's they want to know about that it, it doesn't have you know if I was to hit something would it protect the car yeah it probably would protect it a little bit better this is op open cell foam it's really stiff cell foam um, uh, I think this is some packaging material. Um, it's got some use cut out of it. For the, you notice, I got a front sway bar on this thing. Um, I got Velcro right here to where I run my GNSS on it. Um, but what this is for is so the front end of the body. When you start hitting 70 miles an hour, that body, if it doesn't tuck in, if I don't always start talking about something when I got what I'm talking about right behind me. If the body doesn't tuck in, it can. Um, like badly, like this because of air. I've seen that once or twice from other people. My bodies have never done it. Um, but you can get a deformation. And what have you just done with your arrow there? You've just created uh, the reverse of downforce. Um, um, you can it also look you like can a get shark a, nose, yeah, it does. It does, <laughs> doesn't it? Um, if you can get a fluctuation and that kind of vibration in the body can actually make the chassis do things. So what I'm doing is I bring foam right up to the body. So when you touch the front of my body, it's solid. It's stiff. Um, it's the stiff. That's the first thing hitting the wind. So you want it's to the first it thing hitting the wind. I don't want it to move. Yeah. So uh, body stability is everything. Um, 
And, and uh, the shark bodies are a good place to get it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to disassemble part of this car. You know, let's use this. We need to get the headsets and stuff for stuff like that. They got music going next door. Yeah. Okay. So what bump steer is, is you know what? I'm going to make this car have bump steer really quick. Oh, here it is. Um, what we're going to do, let's just take this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the adjustment and how to, how I'm going to show you to adjust it and stuff. And I'm going to throw it all out the window and put this car back down where most people, most, at least most new guys that didn't know about bump steer would just bolt the, uh, the tire on and go, what the heck's wrong with it? And I'm going to show you when they say what the heck's wrong with it exactly what why they're saying that and this is a long freaking screw this is going to take a minute so i'll use the old uh the old snoop dog twist method okay oh yeah it's horrible now now let me put the wheel back on so you can really amplify what it's doing and it'll make you go really what the heck man Okay. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that's not good. This side actually has a little bit too. Okay. So what bump steer is, is in the front of a car. If you want to zoom in a little bit. I do. Okay. In the front of a car, you want the range of motion of the tire to not only lean over, but, but oh, I got a wheelie bar here. Um, right there. You don't want your wheel to rotate like this. You want it to come up straight and down. But one thing you do, if it does a little bit of rotation, what you don't want it to do is what this wheel is doing. Now watch, it's all the way down. When it's all the way down, that's what we call droop. Now watch when I come up to the top and I go under full compression, what happens to the angle of this wheel? You see how it changes? It's going whoop, whoop. The reason why that is, is because come really close if you take the hinge pin of the arm that's twisting on the bulkhead and the hinge pin down here of the C block that holds the spindle and you call that A and B okay then you look at the steering rod where it's bolted to the servo is A and B at the other end at the spindle what I want look at me real quick is I want those two so here's the A arm Okay, A and B, and I want the steering rod to be perfectly parallel to each other so they can do this. When you have your steering rod down at an angle like this, that's where you get that movement from, okay? So what we do here, now this car doesn't have steering bell cranks on it and any bump steer to adjust that way, but it does... Meaning that that if you did the bump side bump bump uh, bump steer on this side, the bump steer on this side would be the same because it's symmetrical. They're the same on both sides. This car isn't symmetrical on the steering rods. One is short, one is long because of the offset of the servo. The servo's spline doesn't turn in the center of the steering system. So I this. The adjustment I'm going to show you in a minute over here is not going to be the same as it is over here, okay? They're going to be different because of this differential, okay? So I know that I got an arm that's just really, and this car, you know, this car was just thrown together. So even when we're done adjusting it, you know, you'll see it get better, but it still might be there a little bit. Um, if you see that thing dives in probably a good six or seven degrees when I, can you see that yeah. in the camera? Yeah. I'm okay. zoomed in on it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you can see so what I'm going to do, and you can actually, you know, I don't know if you can look through the bumper straight into the A arm, A and B, and the steering arm, but when I lift it up and I make them horizontal, you see how the lower A arm on the, on the front suspension is perfectly flat? And the steering arm back here is not. Lift it, up, lift it up from the bottom. They're at different angles. There you go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside tie rod. 
I'm going to replace the bolt with a longer bolt, and I'm going to put some shims underneath the tie rod, spacing it up <coughs> off the spindle block. And what that's going to do is that's going to get some of that movement when the suspension moves through its range to, to leave. We want that wheel to go up, straight up and down. Um, if you notice in the back, now the back doesn't have a steering rod, so... Uh, Bump steer doesn't relate, but what I want what I want is you notice that even if the, the rear tire rotates a little bit It doesn't do this. It doesn't change its direction of rotation it keeps the camber the same You see how it's see how it's exactly the same it goes straight up and straight down. It doesn't do this or This every time it goes up and down. So let's take this wheel back off And what I'm going to do, how many people we still got watching? Probably Eight, none. 17, including my phone. <laughs> oh, great. That's okay. This thing will get shared around. Okay, so if you want to zoom in on what I'm doing here. I can see it. Okay, so I'm going to take, now I already obviously already done the bump steer on this, so I have a long screw, but normally somebody that had this problem where your tie rod was right on the spindle, bolted on directly onto it with no shims underneath it, and you had that movement, that bump steer movement, um, would have a shorter screw. So the first thing you're going to want to do is use a longer screw. Um, now, if you're running a Traxxas-based vehicle and you have a direct, perfect, and you have a direct steering link. What I mean by direct is that it goes directly from the servo to the wheel. It doesn't have the bell cranks and all the other rods and stuff. So if you're using that on a Traxxas based vehicle and you have to bump steer it, once you get this tie rod sitting up off the spindle, the stock or the RPM plastic arm on the spindle is actually going to flex when it turns. So you've got to ditch that part. You've got to get somebody's aluminum front slash spindles. These ones here are actually just Traxxas ones, and the, or the reason why is when this thing goes out, I want this, this tie rod to follow it perfectly. I don't want the screw in the plastic of the plastic spindle to bend, allowing the tie rod to do this, because then it's, it, it's not accurate. So I think I had, let's just put a little one under there, and then you'll see that it's still not enough. Now again, you can, once you have a spacer under there, if you don't want to put the wheel back on stuff, you can lift the A-arm up and make it straight, and I can still see that tie rod is diving down at a funny angle. They're not at the same angles. So I'm going to take this back off, and I'm going to add a little bit more. You can call Jake's Performance Hobbies Tuesday through Saturday. Um, we put those on, yeah, you'll it's see okay. it move. Um, yeah, you will. Um, and Jake for 15 bucks has an assortment in variety of colors of these different size shims. And these shims right here is what I tell most people to get because you don't know if you're going to need three millimeters or eight millimeters or what it's going to take to get your, your bump steer under control. So I'm going to put what I had on there. Let's just say I've done this six times already and I have a stack of spacers here. I'm going to get it on there. Let's bring it down. Okay, now let's do a quick check. And actually, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So let me put the wheel back on real quick so you can see that. And as you, oh, hold on a sec. Gonna have to bolt it on because it's not playing with me. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, as you can see, that wheel, it's rotating a little bit, but it's not turning the car. Um, Oh, well, now it is. Um, but as you can see, that wheel stays pretty damn straight now.
okay? And what I did was I made the straight line of the A-arm, the suspension arm, and the steering arm the same angle. Um, and sometimes you might get a car where it might be a little bit higher, um, but usually a good starting point is making that steering rod and that A-arm perfectly parallel. And if it still does it a little bit, then come a little bit up higher on the spindle block side. Um, and that's where that's where you adjust bump steers out here at the spindle block. So um, if I, I missed anything or if somebody's unclear about something and I need some help with this bump steer, it can be very frustrating. It is something that's very simple. And once you get it explained to you or you get the hang of it or adjusting bump steer, um, it, it really is a mundane thing. It's, it's very simple to do. It takes a little bit of time uh, to get it just right. Uh, but it, it's doable. You too can do this. So um, let's go ahead and finish putting this back together and then we'll make our announcements okay then what I do is I just get it snug because the actual metal spindle is threaded once I get my adjustment right it's been triple checked I put my screw in, I give it a good snug and then I take a nut just in case that screw was to back out of the spindle okay and I allow it to hang down under the spindle, the length of screw that I use, and I hold it right where it was tight. I don't let it turn, and I give the nut. Now, there's no way this thing is double locked, okay? It's locked against the spacers I put in for bump steer into the thread of the spindle, and then I have a nut locked from the other side so it can't ever rotate out or loosen up. That is foolproof. I've never, ever, Make ever, sure it's a ever. locking nut, too. Yeah, use lock nuts, guys. Uh, locking mechanism they once they come loose there they come right off so um, I've never ever had one back off never had a problem I always keep you know spindles and stuff and stock never you know, knock on wood I've never ever had a problem with anything losing anything or breaking anything so that is bump stair in a nutshell uh, if I can get the freaking wheel back on um, so let's get this thing put back together So, okay, what do we got going? I don't know what the hell we're listening to, but it's not very good music. No. <laughs> no questions? No. Okay, so, um, let me just, I'm this far already, I might as well put this thing back together. Um, I have an announcement to make. Again, I'll remind everybody that's still watching or sees this in the next day. And you're going to want to see it the next day. Rich, what week is it next week? Actually, it starts at 8 p.m. Sunday night. Technically. It's Shark Week. Well, Shark, what's it, what, what is it next week? It's Shark Week. No way. It's freaking... Shark Week! <laughs> well, I was, I was a little zoomed in on that too. <laughs> um, kind of made me jump. Whoa. So, what we're going to do is because mold is in hand and bodies will be start shipping on the Trans Slam, a collaboration has made between Shark RC Bodies or Paul Peterson, uh, me and Bill, uh, Bill uh, Shaw of Desert Hobbies. You guys already know Desert Hobbies. Um, Facebook page if you're not go over and hit the like and follow them They do a lot of videos over there again Bill. Thank you for the equipment. It means the world to me and, and the, the autograph um, But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be giving five Five one two three four five. How many days are in a work week? Five five one two three four five. We're gonna be getting five trans slams away for free. Okay, so I'm not a hundred percent sure how I'm gonna be raffling them the first raffle will be on the first day of Shark Week right here on Judd's RC Motorsports to get your free Trans Slam. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific time, okay? I will let you guys know on the show Monday night how you're going to enter, and we're going to raffle it off right then and there, okay? Tuesday night, we're going to let Emma right here on Judd's RC Motorsports at 6 p.m. raffle off a second body. Then on What's Up Wednesday for Desert Hobbies, Billy Shaw and the gang, they're going to raffle off 
the third Trans Slam. Trans Slam. Then on Thursday, you're going to come back to Judd's RC Motorsports. You're going to enter again for another raffle for another Trans Slam on Thursday night. Then we're going to end the five-body, five-day Shark Week week on Friday night with Bill Shaw and Desert Hobbies. And he is going to raffle off the final Trans Slam Shark body. So those bodies will actually go into the list of pre-orders. Our pre-orders will go out. The winners will get their bodies. Um, our customer, our paying customers, I think it's, uh, me and Paul have talked about it. Um, it's fair. You want to get, when somebody wins a raffle, you want to get their stuff to them. But on a new product, if you already have people that paid their hard-earned money, that's where the raffle guys go behind. So... Um, once you win it, it'll be a week out or so, two weeks out, whatever it is, we'll get you your body. You got a new Trans Slam coming in the mail uh, if you win one of these raffles. Again, 6 p.m., the first one, Monday night, right here on Judd's RC Motorsports. Um, and we're going to be giving it away. So, um, again, the Trans Slam will start shipping this week, this upcoming week. Um, the plan is to have a, uh, a Trans Slam. Uh, on on one of the cars uh and here for your viewing um what does that mean hopefully i'll have one done uh you, yeah your yours will all have one done but yours will probably come out with mine so um i have um some new members to the shark team but i'm not going to announce them i will announce them monday night because i still need to reach out to them these three people and let them know that We'd like to offer them a sponsorship with Sharp. Uh, again, they're three people that, you know, whether, you know, they're very, very fast people, but whether they win, you know, we, we don't look at that. We look at your love for Sharp, you know. Uh, you know, if you want to be, if you were a misfit all on your own, then we want you to come be a misfit with us. So I'll be reaching out to those three people. Um, again, I don't know if there's any questions about the drawing. Shark Week's going to be awesome. These trans slams are going to go out. You're going to start seeing them all over the nation and then more to come after that. So uh, we're not going to talk about that right now, but uh, this trans slam is, is, is awesome. We, uh, we actually had it done a week and a half, two weeks ago, and there was one little thing we wanted to change. But you can't just change it with the CNC guy. You have to go back and talk to the designer. The designer has to pull it up on his computer, fix it, and then bring it back to the CNC guy and finish it off. And that's kind of what we've been doing the last two weeks. So that's why it was stalled uh, again for the last two weeks. But it's in hand. It's final. Uh, I think he's going to make the air box for it tonight uh, and then let it dry. And then tomorrow it goes into production. And Monday and Tuesday, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I think they start shipping out. I know he's also, uh, it might even be Tuesday or Wednesday. And, and for the simple fact that um, he doesn't want to ship the bodies out without the window maskings. And you can't make the window maskings until you have a body to make them to. So, um, and, and that's what's going to be happening uh, by the end of this weekend. We'll have bodies. They'll be made. They'll start going out to this guy and that guy to, to, to really get our, our decals done. And we got, we got a surprise for you shark guys, too, for the decals on this one, too. Uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty badass. Um, so... Um, I think that, does anybody have any that's watching right now live, do you guys have any more questions about uh, anything that we covered here tonight? Maybe any new guys? Um, anything about the raffle, Shark Week? Tell a friend, tell your mom, tell your aunt, tell your grandma, tell your racing buddies, tell your school teacher, tell whoever that Shark Week on Judd's RC Motorsports and Desert Hobbies is going to be live. We're giving away a brand new release body, um, and, and, it, and it's going to be awesome. So um, I feel like I've been talking a lot. You have. I have been tired of hearing um, you talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I am. I am so freaking sunburned. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I am freaking red. I mean, I'm like a lobster right now. Um, you give me the transmitter and a ginger ale, and I go off onto the beach. And I'm like, nah, I'm cold with sun. You know, I'm just running the car. Um, our new buddy John. I have to look up his last name. I don't have. You're you're on my phone right now. So, uh, John that came out with us to the. Um, to the, the sand drags, it was a pleasure having you out there. This guy sent it. Um, so I don't think it was me. Somebody else said, well, it's already been in the water. Try sending it across the lagoon. <laughs> How many times And this guy drove this slash drag sand car to try and cross the lagoon of water in a two-wheel drive car like 15 times. I was paying kid, kids $5 bills to go out and get it because it kept sinking. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was it's over there. I think a little bit more gearing, a little bit more wheel spin. 
uh, a little bit more uh, a little bit more decking down to the water so it's flatter and I think he's got it so but this guy just let made it, all it made it like three quarters away yeah like once one at one time yeah, yeah. Uh, and he just this guy just he just oh it's cool let's do it again you know and, and then the next thing you know he was giving us the remote letting us try it and and it was just it was just a fun time and it had to have been what 200 feet across no I don't think it was that far I think it, it was I think it, not where we were trying. Right where we were trying was about a hundred feet across, but it's still a lot of water, dude. I mean, it's it's four feet deep, you know. So <laughs> yeah, it's, um, for the guy to just send it like that over and over again, and he just kept on I and mean, completely submerged. Sink to three, the bottom. Sink to the bottom. Cells, sink to the bottom. Kid, you know, eight year old kid drag pulls it, it out and goes, "Here's your car back," and throws it on land, and he drives it off to do another one. One so. kid just drug it back underwater. Yeah, he didn't even pick it up. <laughs> he was just dragging it by the wheelie bar underwater. It was awesome. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, tune in here, you guys. If you guys, you know, got a buddy that's looking for a body, uh, if you got somebody who's been eyeballing the shark bodies, if you yourself uh, wouldn't mind having one of the new Trans Slams, uh, tune in this week to Judd's RC Motorsports Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and Desert Hobbies for What's Up Wednesday and Friday to get your shot at a free Trans Slam Shark RC drag body. Yes. BJ Lowe asks, what do you like better, a 4.0 or a 3.5? What do you prefer? Uh, I'll take, I'm actually running some free turns right now with my R1s. Um, the R1, if you do run an R1 and you want to do that, be careful with the tune. If you don't know what you're doing, talk to somebody, talk to me, reach out to me or Rich uh, about the tune uh, because you want to keep it a little light due to the fact the R1 is technically only rated for a 3.5. So I don't want to tell you guys, oh yeah, the three, the three turn is the way to go. Uh, and you go get a three turn, and then maybe some of my buddy might even try a two five, and they wonder why the R one you know didn't make it or whatever. I'm running a conservative tune uh, in in uh, in my or a couple of my cars with the three turns. Uh, what has this got in it? Oh, this is a this is an R one no mark motor. <laughs> uh, um, I believe the Corleone has a three point five in it. I, so I yes, I run. I, I I will take the four turn and the four five are great motors. But if you want to start making power, you're three five and down. So um, you know I'm I run I run a three turn in mine R one three turn. Yeah, all, and my you, whole your car's ripping, to, dude. So whole setup. But I got it. It's all tuned down, t power taken out, and you're not. I'm not aggressive with it. Yeah, things still moving. But you got to be uh, careful. If I had it. to choose, though, his question though, if I had to choose from a four turn to a three five, I would take a three five. Yeah. yeah. So anything else? Uh, Sky said he needs a hat. Sky needs a hat. I'm, I'm thinking about doing an order of these. Um, I personally, I don't get a deal for these guys. I pay $25 for these. They are flex fit hats. They are not patches. These are custom embroidered hats. That's why I use the guy because I know uh, it's one of my buddies, uh, Justin Holt up at the Lake County guys. What's up, Justin? If you see this, he turned me on to this guy and I just pay the money because it is just second to none stuff. Um, whether it's the t-shirts or the hats or the pullovers or whatever that we got. I'll pay. <laughs> um, that's fine. So I want to, I'll put, maybe in the next week, uh, Sky, I'll put out a, a thing and see how many people want them and we'll get an order together because I don't want to call them for one or two hats. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get some hats coming. Um, I'd love to be able at a point to where I can give hats out like this and give shirts out like this, but... This comes out of my grocery money. This is this is you know with all the other stuff that I do for people and I help people out with. Um, this is this is something that's just like I, I just I can't do that too. So um, hopefully someday we're at that point. You know what I'm saying? But right now um, we're not. I will get back to you on that. Sky would love for you to have a Judd's RC Motorsports hat. Um, I'd love everybody to have one, but I don't think everybody wants to wear one. So that's okay with me. Um, and I just love this car. I love my new Cobra Jet scheme. Emma got the same scheme on the on the Funky Monkey, the green car. Um, What's up, Biggie Paul? What's up, Biggie? Welcome to Biggie's world. Yeah, Florida. that's what he always says. <laughs> huh? In the house from Florida. From Florida. Florida. Um, hi, Emma. Oh, you took the chocolate off your your cheeks. Can I just Emma. No, I don't agree. Yeah. Jeez, kid. Um, so, yeah, you guys, for people just chiming in, 
Monday through Friday, between me and Bill Shaw of Desert Hobbies, we're going to be going live at 6 p.m. So we're going to be giving these bodies away, these new trans slams, um, and and and, and you you can get a chance to get a free one. Now, with that being said, anybody in the world watching can win one, but only for those five winners, those five winners to get the free body with the free shipping right to your door. Um, you can only be in the lower 48. So if you're in Canada or you're in New Zealand or you're in the Cayman Islands and you win one, that's fine. But you got to pay the shipping because that, that, again, that's just one of those things where it's just like, it can be really expensive. I mean, I ship something that I normally ship over to the East Coast. Well, it's going to cost as much 60 as the, bucks and, the body cost. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, and, and it's true. So, um, and, and that, that's just, that's just how we're going to do it. We're, uh, we're, we're the small guy, we're the underdog and, um, and I think it's it's a really cool thing that my, my good friend Paul uh, Peterson is doing um, by by doing these these raffles and letting people get their hands on them. Um, so and, if, and if and if you and I'll say this straight up, you can like me if you don't if if you uh, you can like me, you can hate me for saying this, but if you you know you got a, a hatred hard on in any way, shape, or form for shark shark, you might want to pay attention. This new one might 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 uh, might change your mind. So um, good stuff coming. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, a lot of stuff coming from R1. You can't talk about it, um, but I, it's just it's really exciting stuff. And I know that Steve was away on vacation for a couple weeks, and he's a really, really busy guy. I think they took, um, if not all of R1, a, I think a portion of R1, like 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 maybe, I don't know, maybe it's their packaging and distributing or whatever, and he has both of them. But I know that in the last month, they went through a huge move. Hmm. And R1 is not a small company. They're a big company. So... Um, I couldn't, I, I moved my 1300 square foot mobile home with a, one buddy of mine. I couldn't imagine moving a freaking company, you yeah. know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that stuff will come when it comes and that's all there is to it. Um, again, big, huge shout out to Jake's Performance Hobbies, 707-586-3375 for all your drag race RC needs. Uh, they do ship to lower 48. Um, I think he's even shipped outside the United States. Um. And uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Paul Peterson uh, for for being my friend and 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 you know allowing me to and entrusting me with his baby shark body to, uh, to uh, be team manager and do what I do for the company. Um, to Steve Villanueva of R1 um, for all he does. Um, for Dave Enstrom uh, at DE Racing Tires. Um, Mark Vine, Bob Vine, um, all the vines, <laughs> the great vine. The great vine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to uh, to thank Remington and Smith and Wesson. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, Mr. Roy Offenbacher at Pop Bear 3D Designs. Um, Kelly at Nav or the Petaluma Muffler Bra or Muffler Works. Petaluma Muffler Works. Uh, if you're in the Sonoma County and you want a good exhaust job done, you got a cat needs replaced. You got you know, some kind of a mission, something going on. If you need a custom welding fabrication project, head on down to Petaluma, uh, go to the Muffler Works and, uh, and talk to Kelly. He's one of my best friends. So, um, other than that, I got three people to call and offer, uh, sponsors to, um, tune in for Shark Week. Me and let's give him a name, which is let, let's let the people name him. What is what uh, is my somebody, shark buddy's hold name? Hold on, somebody said something in the beginning. Let me look it up real quick. What's my shark buddy? Because I when I'm talking to him during the show this week, I need to know how to refer to him. Yeah, so this thing, I love this when this thing sits with all its weight in it. That's just a rocket. Um, Bruce. Bruce the shark. Brucey? Yeah. Okay. I like Chris, Bruce. Chris hollered out. That was early in the show. When okay, I like Bruce. Out. I like Bruce. Let's do Bruce. Let's do Bruce. We're calling it Bruce. Whoever that was, good job. That was, uh, <laughs> just, I just, Chris. Chris. Chris Padilla. Padilla? Padilla. 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 Uh, uh, Padilla? Padilla. It sounds better, Padilla, so maybe that's it, but I don't know. It could be Padilla. I don't know. I've I don't know. I, I have to talk to him anyway, I've... so I will find out. Oh. I will get down to the bottom of that mystery. Uh... <laughs> Gumshoe judge. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, let's, let's, yeah, da, da, da. let's sign out. Um, uh, I love all you guys. Thank you for following me. Um, I hope I helped somebody, uh, some kind of newcomer out with what bump steer is or what tools to use for what, or maybe even a heavy hit iteration. It's like, you know what, 15 bucks. I'm going to get one of those little skill tools, you know. This is actually only two weeks old, and it's black with all kinds of stuff from my hands. <laughs> uh, it works really good. So, and wear gloves, too. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Wear gloves uh, if you're, you know, if you're extracting. You're using a drum at all, guys. Please use safety, safety glasses. Safety you only get one pair of eyes, man, and you get a fragment of, uh, of of a death wheel that flies off of there into your eyeball. And probably the eyeball probably ain't gonna work no more. So um, these are good tools to have in your arsenal, um, but they they can also be dangerous. As small as they are, you know, uh, they they really can. So uh, I want to sign out. I love all you guys. God bless America. Um, and uh, and we'll see you next Saturday night. Actually, we'll see you Monday night. We'll see, we'll see you Monday, Monday night. night for Shark Week. For Shark Week. For Shark Week. Um, and uh, that's, and that's it. it. Peace out. Peace out.